Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Sipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Less than two weeks till the Breeders' Cup, which means we've got three shows, three big Breeders' Cup shows on Horse Center to bring you fans. Pre-entries coming, then the draw. We're getting ready. Absolutely, Matt. That's one of the many things I like about you. You always tell me how far we are away from the big races. And yeah, it's next week, Matt. That's that's exciting. The Breeders' Cup, 14 big races at Del Mar next Friday and Saturday, the 5th and 6th of November, Matt. You know what we're going to do today? We are going to look at the horse to beat. Not the horse to beat in a Breeders' Cup race, but all 14 Breeders' Cup races, folks. Matt and I are looking at our, at our bets. We're not looking at the odds even. We're just saying who is the horse to beat in each of the 14 races. Matt, are you prepared for this? I am ready, as always, Brian. All right, let's do it, Matt. We're going to go in order of the races, Matt. So we'll start Friday with the uh, Juvenile Showcase Day at the Breeders' Cup. We're going to start with the short turf race. Five furlongs on the turf, Matt. I think that distance is key. This is a filly that we agree on as the horse to beat in the juvenile turf sprint. Yeah, that's for sure. One very, very fast filly. We talked about uh, Averly Jane uh, a couple shows ago, two or three shows ago, uh, trying to uh, figure out where she was going to show up. Could she possibly going to go on the dirt because she had some very fast dirt races uh, uh, in her early races, but then most recently uh, on the turf at Keeneland, another big victory by Averly Jane. Fast fractions, 21, 44, 56, going five and a half furlongs. So I expect Averly Jane in the, uh, in the juvenile turf sprint, and she's going to be tough to beat. She's going to be tough to beat, Matt. And Wesley Ward, of course, has become, this has become his specialty, uh, especially on the turf. Very fast two-year-olds. Uh, he keeps him around a little bit, too, as we'll talk about a little bit later in the show. But a Averly Jane has just been fantastic. One of the things I like about her, Matt, her first th three races, the, the reason we were talking about where is she going to go, her first three races were all on dirt. And if you look at them, they were on a fast track, a good track a sloppy track. It doesn't matter to her. She's just got freakish speed as a lot of these really, really good Wesley Ward horses do. And this daughter mid midshipman uh, has just been awesome. Four starts already, which is uh, kind of a lot for juveniles these days headed to the Breeders' Cup, but she's been dominant no matter where she's gone. And as you said, uh, she got to turf. She had been ha having a bunch of workouts on turf before she ever raced on turf. She got turf in the Indian summer was the name of the race at Keeneland. And once again, she looked as dominant as ever winning that race. I think five furlong sets up perfectly for her. I think she has the males over a barrel in this race, Matt Schiffman. She's our horse to beat in the juvenile turf sprint. Next, we're gonna stretch out to a mile, Matt. Stretch out yourself because we gotta run a mile here. It's also on the grass. And this time it's the juvenile males going one mile in the juvenile turf. Matt, surely we can't agree on two straight races as the horse to beat, can we? Uh, I wouldn't expect that to happen, Brian, particularly when we're talking about two turf races, but so it is. Um, here we both are on Albar. Um, I'm on the Charlie Appleby bandwagon. I'm on the Euro bandwagon here. Seems to be the logical uh, thing to do. And, and this horse... Uh, has been uh, doing pretty darn good things. Didn't win his uh, first race, but now has won four in a row, including coming over from Europe for his last start in the grade one summer at Woodbine. Um, and before that, three nice wins in Great Britain. Um, I liked that the horse came over already, and it's Charlie Appleby. We're both on Albar. What do you got to add? Well, yeah, Matt, uh, Char Charlie Appleby, I, I, I think for me, if I, when I was deciding the horse to beat in this race, I was looking at Godolphin, Dubawi, and Charlie Appleby. I, I, I think he actually has probably the two horses to beat. They're both uh, sons of Dubawi. They're both 
Godolphin homebreds, but I was I went with you. I went with Albar as the horse to beat. Uh, yeah, it, 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 that one race in North America, I think, um, is part of the reason that I, I, I like him a little bit better than his stable bait, Modern Games, who also looks very good. But Albar was very good in England. As you said, he ran third in his first start, and then he won three straight over there. Then he came over here and really impressed with what I saw at Woodbine. I, I think it'll be even a tougher field, but uh, Frankie Dettori kind of moved him uh, through on the inside. He quickly accelerated as he switched to the outside. Uh, he had a little trouble at the start. He had a little trouble in the stretch, but he was clearly best there at Woodbine. One mile seems to be uh, perfect for him. That's what he did run at Woodbine. So I think he is the horse to beat. But uh, you might not need to look any further than Charlie Appleby in this juvenile turf. Matt, next we'll go back to the dirt. Our first dirt race we're going to talk about is the Mile 16th Juvenile Phillies. Probably will decide an Eclipse Award. And if we're talking who would win the Eclipse Award so far, I don't think there's any doubt that Echo Zulu tops the list. Yeah, that's for sure, Steve. Asmussen. Uh going to be definitely going to be a favorite in the race but the juvenile Phillies historically is one of the races that the favorites have done very much the best uh, in uh, this is a fast Philly that has not only been fast in her debut at Saratoga in July but continued to be fast uh, in the grade one frisette and the grade one uh, spin away as uh, she's moved along in, in her races. As the distances in, have, have increased, she's continued to be fast and extremely hard to beat, winning by big margins. Absolutely. You know, Gunrunner became a special horse. He was a good horse all along. He just got better and better, and he became truly a special horse. Uh, later in his career, and he has come out of the gate as a sire running, Matt. Gunrunner has had just a spectacular first season as a sire, and he deserves a, a champion, I think, in this crop. And, and it looks like Echo Zulu has a great chance to be that champion for her sire, Gunrunner. Echo Zulu has been fantastic, as Matt said. She's gone five and a half, seven furlongs, one mile. Now, she's never been two turns like she'll see out at Del Mar in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. But uh, with that speed and, and the way she's able to accelerate in the stretch, I really don't think a mile 16th will be a problem. The, the question is, you know, maybe she'll see some better Phillies out in the Breeders' Cup than she's faced so far. But uh, like, like Matt was talking about, the spin away and the present of Paragrade 1 races at Saratoga and then Belmont were just really... Uh, dominated by this uh, daughter of uh, gun runner trained by Steve Asmussen. Folks, we are not going to pick all favorites. Thankfully, we are not going to pick all favorites with our horses to beat. I promise uh, we might have picked three so far. I'm not sure about Albar, yeah. uh, but certainly Echo Zulu and Averly Jane look like the favorites in their respective races. Speaking of not picking favorites as the horses to beat, Matt, let's move to the juvenile Phillies turf one mile and when I asked you, and then I looked at it after I asked myself to say, who's the horse to beat in this juvenile Phillies turf? Uh, I, I could only scratch off a few, and I ended up with a list of about 11 of possible winners of the juvenile Phillies turf. Matt, this race seems to be extremely wide open. Yeah, Brian, the, uh, the juvenile Phillies turf, like you said, uh, it is a really wide open field and it's a race where uh, the Americans have typically done pretty well. It's a, it's a tight turf course and uh, the, the Europeans don't always do real well in there. So I, I didn't want to, to play the favorite in here. I ended up landing on a, uh, a Brad Cox, Florent Giroux probably will be the rider, uh, a turf course, turf horse named Turner loose. She won her first two races, a nice maiden win at Ellis Park, uh, uh, followed by uh, a stakes win at Kentucky Downs that she won by five lengths. Came back uh, at Keeneland recently, ran a pretty good race, uh, didn't get a win. This is going to be a relatively big price for me. Yeah, Turner Loose. Uh, Turner Loose is uh, one of many that I had on my list as well, Matt. Uh, she did lose last time at Keeneland, but she's looked very good. Three different turf courses in Kentucky. Definitely 
one of the ones in here. So, uh, folks, uh, I guess we're saying there's not really necessarily a horse to beat the Juvenile Phillies Turf. So we're picking the horse that we think is the most likely winner at this point. I went with Carol Memories. Carol Memories is a daughter of Carol Prince. Uh, Bob Hess has been around a long time as a trainer. You don't always hear the name, but uh, he knows how to handle a good horse. I think Carol Memories might be a good horse. Uh, she won her maiden at Del Mar. Then she moved over to Santa Anita to win the Surfer Girl Stakes. So she's two for two. Uh, and, and I like the, uh, the turn of foot she's shown. She's kind of taken over her races uh, as soon as they hit the stretch. Carol Memories is my horse to beat in a crazy wide open juvenile. Phillies turf at a mile at Del Mar on the grass. Finally, the headliner of Friday, of course, is the juvenile mat, one mile and one sixteenth on the dirt. And for the second straight race, I'm happy to say that we have different horses to beat. I kind of like your horse to beat. Who's your horse to beat? Yeah, I, uh, I think we're both looking to beat the favorite, who's probably going to be Chad Brown's uh, Jack Christopher. Um, Chad Brown's won a lot of uh, Breeders' Cup races, but only one of them on on the dirt. It 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 did happen to be in the Juvenile, and it did happen to be at Del Mar uh, back with uh, Good Magic, but. I felt like it was a good spot to take a shot against the favorite. I'm going to go with Command Performance, who technically is still a maiden, with uh, who recently ran second in the Champagne, a nice late running uh, second in the Champagne, gaining ground on that on Jack Christopher, the likely favorite from the barn of Todd Pletcher. Yeah, come in performance. I, he, he will be on my tickets. There's no doubt about that. The son of Union Rags, you know, he had a, a pretty bad uh, uh, beginning there in his maiden race at Saratoga. And then, I, and then I liked what I saw in the champagne. One turn, Jack Christopher had one horse to beat early. He put him away and, and kind of took the race over. But that was one turn and come in performance was the horse running down the stretch in there. So I think that's a very interesting horse, one that I definitely want to play in the juvenile but if i had to say the horse to beat and that's what we're doing here uh, i think it's corniche uh, corniche has a few advantages uh the son of quality road trained by uh, bob Dapper. he's got a ton of speed uh i saw him do a workout the other day that i was really impressed where he's passing horses down the stretch nicely so i i don't think he's necessarily a, a speed ball that's going to uh, get burned up and quit um two for two he won his maiden at Del Mar, so he's got a, a race over the track. He's also got a race at two turns, which the uh, uh, Eastern horses don't have because he won the grade one American Pharaoh. In both of those races at Del Mar and then the American Pharaoh, uh, he used his speed to dominate. And I, I, I just think if there's one horse who's a horse to beat, it's Corniche. It's on a quality road for trainer Bob Baffert. Matt, that is our Breeders' Cup Friday. We still have nine races to go. On that note, I just want to remind everyone out there that uh, if you would subscribe to us here or uh, uh, the HRN channel on YouTube, we'd appreciate it. It helps Matt and I out. Turn on those notifications so you never miss another episode of Horse Center. Matt, let's move to Saturday, the big card, nine of them. We're going to start with the Philly and Mare Sprint. Uh, it looks like it might be the smallest field of all, and I think we might have the heaviest favorite of all in this Breeders' Cup. Philly and Mare Sprint. Yeah, I mean, uh, certainly going to be one of the biggest favorites eat down, you know, uh, uh, below even money, possibly, uh, you know, what a record for this uh, Bob Baffert uh, runner, 10 races in her career, nine victories. Her only loss was going two turns in the Kentucky Oaks and, and uh, uh, back sprinting. She's been awfully tough. I will admit, Brian, there was a little bit of a period of time, you know, a month or a couple months ago where I thought about um, maybe taking a shot about Gamine. But as you mentioned, the field has evolved uh, to what looks like a really small field. And I, and I, you know, it, it seems like the usual kind of suspects, um, maybe only one horse with a shot to beat Gamine, but out in California, small field, she's going to be really tough. She's the horse to beat. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, you mentioned her record, nine of 10. She's never been beaten around one turns. She came back with two positive uh, 
post-race tests uh, uh, to her uh, to her record, but uh, she still holds that record of nine of 10 lifetimes. She's four for four in 2021. When I think it can mean, I think of races like last year's Acorn, last year's Test, last year's Breeders' Cup, and, and she was just draw dropping uh, the way she uh, uh, ran away from her competition with speed and then uh, a turn of foot at the top of the stretch. I don't think I've quite seen that yet this year, honestly. I, you know, I know she's been really good this year, but I don't know if she's been as explosive as she was last year. I'm going to take a shot to beat her in here, and I, I think there is one or two horses that could beat her in the uh, uh, um, Philly and Mare Sprint. But if we're talking about the horse to beat, yeah, obviously, it's going to be. All right, we're going to go to the turf sprint next, Matt. And here is one where we do not have a unanimous horse to beat. I love those kind of races. Mine is different than yours. I'm picking a former Breeders' Cup winner. You're going with someone else. Yeah, Brian, uh, um, I think you're going to talk about the about Golden Pal, the likely favorite. And, and hey, uh, he's a terrific horse, Brian. And uh, But I felt like this is a race where I wanted to take a shot against the favorite. And I'm going to take the shot uh, with Lieutenant Dan doing my best uh, Forrest Gump impersonation there, uh, who is the winner of three in a row in the best form of his career, a West Coaster with victories at uh, Del Mar already, most recently a win um, in the Eddie D, a grade two at Santa Anita, a win in a grade through the Green uh, the green flash at Del Mar, also an allowance win at Del Mar to start off uh, the winning streak. Yeah, it, it's going to be hard to beat Golden Pal, but um, I don't know. I, I, I think it's worth a shot. Yeah. And, and again, we're just talking about the horses to beat. And uh, uh, thank you for the forced gump impression, Matt. That was uh, that was pretty much spot on. Lieutenant Dan, hey, he's three for three. He's a Californian, as Matt says. He, uh, he's been winning out in California. I don't know if the competition's uh, yeah. quite nearly as tough as he'll see in the turf sprint. Um, hey, I, I, I think Wesley Ward could win two turf sprints at the Breeders' Cup with two females beating the boys because I think his uh, returning Kamari is just a really, really nice mare who probably would be second on my list of horses to beat, but you, you gave away who I think is the horse to beat. I, I think it's Golden Pal. I, I think he's been the best turf sprinter I've seen in a few years here in America. Uh, I don't know that anybody coming from Europe is going to beat Golden Pal. And I think he's faster. He's quicker than anything that we have going on the grass here in America. Five furlongs right up his alley. I have to say Golden Pal is the, turf to, is the horse to beat in the turf sprint. The dirt mile, Matt. Another race where we have uh, a, a, a two different horses as our horse to beat. I want to hear who yours is first because uh, I'm interested to know who you think is going to beat Silver State in the Dirt Mile. Hey, we got life is good in here, and and we're, and this is going to be a, a, a test for life is good to find out um, just how good he is. You know, remembering back to March with those three wins. Uh, as of early in this three-year-old season, he was probably the best three-year-old running. He was probably going to go on to be the favorite in the Kentucky Derby, um, came back uh, and uh, ran against Jack these warrior uh, in his first race back in, in, a, in several months. What a tough task. Uh, for any horse, and then a nice solid prep race selected by new trainer Todd Plesher to win the Kelso. Yes, is this the toughest field that he's probably going to have faced in his career? Absolutely, but I think life is good is the horse to beat. You're, you're going to have to show me life is good. You're going to have to show me again how good you are because I think this is a tough spot. I am, uh, I, I'm not joking around and saying Ginobili is becoming a really serious horse and he's got a lot of speed. I think there's speed in here for life is good. I saw Jackie's warrior get the better of him down the stretch at Saratoga, two races back. Yeah, life is good. That was his first race back and all, but I think he's going to get tested in here again. And, and I just honestly don't think he's the horse to beat. So as a heavy favorite, I love that. And, and my horse is Silver State. I think Silver State loves a mile. Listen, he won six races in a row, a bunch of stakes, 
including the Oakland handicap. But most importantly, he won the Met Mile, and that is the other biggest uh, dirt mile race in America. Yeah, I like the way he won it. I like the way he's coming into the race. Yeah, I know that uh, funky uh, last 100 yards at Parks looks a little weird, but that's just going to get better odds. I think Silver State has enough tactical speed to be in touch, and then I think his late run will be irresistible. I think he's the horse to beat, and I'm happy to say it with uh, decent odds in the dirt mile. We're going to go to the Philly and Mare Turf, Matt. Next, who is your horse to beat in this uh, mile and three-eighths turf race for the girls at Del Mar? As we stretch out now, Brian, and, and we are talking about turf races now that are longer distances, the big purse money turf races also. I think the Europeans have an edge in all the races. I'm going to try and beat the favorite in this race. I'm going to make a pick of Loves Only You, and, and we'll find out after the, the, the pre-entries if uh, this Japanese filly is going to go and race against her own sex or maybe try the boys in the turf. But this is a, a grade one winner um, in Japan, a grade one winner, more impressively, at Sha Tin in Hong Kong, and a horse that ran second to the great Mishrif um, in Dubai. This is a quality horse. We'll get decent odds on this European. Yeah, although she's not a European, Matt. She's an Asian, so I'm, I'm not sure if you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if you like the European best in here. International so Japanese. All right, loves only you. Listen, I, I agree, and and it'll be interesting to see how she's bad because often Japanese horses aren't shown a ton of respect here. But this one, this one is so clearly a, a really really good, and there have been some great Japanese mares over recent years, but we haven't seen them come over to the Breeders' Cup. Loves only you. I expect her to run against the Phillies in this Philly and mare turf. And yeah, I, I was almost tossing a coin between who I think is the one to beat because I think Love, Loves Only You is a great, a great pick in this race. I think she is a huge threat. She's traveled before. She's run big before. She's run against boys. Mile three eights is right up her alley. She's got a huge threat. But Warlike Goddess has, has a few advantages as well. She's run on different turf courses here in America. She's only been beaten once in her career. She's won her last four uh, races, all graded stakes at different racetracks. I've seen her here in Kentucky. She's done it in New York. She's done it in Florida. So I think Del Mar will be fine. She likes a distance, which isn't always true of the American turf uh, horses. Warlike Goddess, she has just an irresistible late move that makes it hard for anything to stop her once she gets rolling down the stretch. Uh, I like I like your pick, Love's Only You, but I, I'm going to go with the American Warlike Goddess as my horse to beat. Billy Mott, daughter of English Channel, only once beaten in her career, Matt. What's not to like? And what's not to like about our horse to beat in the sprint? Uh, on this, there can be no argument, Matt. We are in complete agreement, a unanimous choice for the Breeders' Cup Sprint horse to beat. Yep, Jackie's Warrior, going to be a big favorite also, maybe not one of the top two heaviest favorites, but a, but a big favorite. And like you said, Brian, what's not to like about uh, uh, Jackie's Warrior? She's on, you know, she's on a roll. Uh, uh, won, th won three races uh, in a row, won over a million dollars this year as a sprinter. That That's a lot of... Uh, that's a lot of dough. I mean, her only recent loss came when she got out of the gate very badly, but still almost won that race. Uh, Steve Asmussen has won this uh, sprint event uh, recently. Um, Got to go with Jackie's Warrior. Yeah, Jackie's Warrior is absolutely the horse to be in the in the uh, Breeders' Cup sprint, Matt. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying two Asmussen horses here within three races uh, on dirt at uh, Del Mar. Jockeys were, you're right, the Woody Stevens, the grade one Woody Stevens going seven furlongs at Belmont uh, on Belmont Stakes Day. He did not have the trip and he was narrowly beaten. If he had a decent trip, I'm convinced he would have won that race as well. That would make him nine for nine in one turn races. And he's running in big one turn races. He's running with pace pressure. 
he is just a really, really tough horse. That's the thing I like the best about him. I mean, he's consistent as heck. He's fast as heck. But he's also just a bulldog when it comes down to the stretch. So Jackie's warrior, son of McLean's music. I think he's the best sprinter of any gender. I'm hoping they bet Dr. Scheibel a lot. I know Jackie's warrior will be the favorite, but I, I, I'm hoping he's not one of the biggest favorites of the whole Breeders' Cup card. In the mile, I know we won't have a big favorite in the Breeders' Cup mile. A mile on the turf, Matt. We are in different camps here as the horse to beat here. I want to know yours first. Yeah, but I think we've come across the two very likely uh, horses uh, to win the race. And and uh, maybe I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but I'm going with Charlie Appleby. I'm going with, uh, with an international horse, a European. I'm going with Space Blues, the, uh, the winner of uh, uh, his last two races. Um, the winner, both of those were at seven furlongs. One at Longchamp, a grade one, another one at York. So traveled around Europe. I think these those seven furlong victories uh, uh, move really well and set this horse up really well for the turf mile. They do, they do, they absolutely do. And he is better than ever. He's, he's won a lot of races in his career. Uh, Space Blues is a seven furlong star. And, and that sounds kind of weird because we would never call a horse in America a real seven furlong star. But he is pretty much, if you look at his past performances, he has really zoned in on seven furlong. So one mile, two turns at Del Mar might be a slightly different game for him. Uh, you know, if he runs his best, yeah, you're probably right. He is the horse to beat. But coming over to Del Mar, two turns, uh, I think there is an opportunity to beat him. Uh, I think the horse he'll buy for favoritism with is the horse that I am picking as the horse to beat because I know more Forza loves a mile. I know he loves two turns. I know he loves California turf. The son of Uncle Mo uh, has won eight of nine of his, his last nine races. He's won eight of them. His only loss was when he stretched out in Florida. Uh, he's been strictly unbeatable and, and he's just got a way about him where he just sits in, in good position early. And then he makes that move and he just is one of those horses who knows where the wire is. He just keeps winning. Uh, he's only had two races this year. I think he's ready to run his best race, his third race of the year in the Breeders' Cup mile. So I'm going with the American over Space Blues. I'm saying Mo Forza is actually the horse to beat in the Breeders' Cup mile. Matt, next is the Breeders' Cup distaff. And uh, I'm not expecting us to disagree on this. You know, I might try to beat Latruska in the Breeders' Cup distaff but I would have to be nuts not to say she's the horse to beat with everything she's done this year. Latruska is certainly the, the horse to beat. She has just absolutely dominated this, uh, this division. Uh, four grade one victories, five wins in a row. The last four wins have all been Breeders' Cup challenge races, uh, uh, Brian, pure domination, almost won $2 million in 2021. Um, to me, it looks like a field that for Latruska is the usual suspects. No, I, I, I would say that there are some new suspects in there, especially the three-year-olds. There's some good three-year-olds in there, but yeah, she's beaten a bunch. Remember, she only split with She Dares a Devil uh, uh, this year in two tries, but I'm, I'm, I'm just looking to, to, to put things against Latruska. The, the, the truth is that it's, it's hard to say anything negative. What a great story. A trained by Fausto Gutierrez. She ran her six, first six races of her career in Mexico City of all places. And now this daughter of Super Saber has moved to the head of the class. I think she's a threat to be horse of the year. I said Jackie's Warrior was unlucky not to be nine of nine going one turns. Latruska is really unlucky not to be seven for seven this year. Not talked about her five straight wins, but six races back, she she was the best horse. She gave she dares the devil weight, and and she lost ground to she dares the devil, and she came running in that Azari Stakes. Latruska has been marvelous. This will be her toughest test yet, but uh, hey, she is absolutely the horse to beat in the distaff. How about the Breeders' Cup turf, Matt? Um, I think we might have disagreement in here, or maybe not, but there's two clear favorites I think in the defending champion and domestic spending. Yep, but that's it's a it's a really good matchup as the card goes along and we get near the end, the biggest turf race uh, of the Breeders' Cup, uh, uh, American domestic spending against the internationals, and it's a good field of internationals. 
but uh, the Philly Tarnow is coming back um, in really good form, even though uh, she ran second in the arc and even though she ran second uh, uh, at Leopardstown in the champion stakes, she's one tough, talented Philly. And, and we know that she can win on the American uh, turf courses. Um, certainly having won the race last year, she's the horse to beat. Okay, I, I'm going to agree with you. Uh, uh, listen, I've been seeing uh, His Highness, His, His Highness uh, Aga Khan have uh, great turf horses uh, my entire life, basically. And this one, trained by Dermot Weld, it, it certainly fits the bill. She's been wonderful all along. She got good last summer over there in France, and uh, she proved it. She got really good, I should say. She proved it when she came over here and, and just rolled by in the Breeders' Cup turf last year at Keeneland. Uh, yeah, she's lost her last two, but I tell you what, if she runs like she did in the Irish champion or she runs like she did in the arc, I expect her to win her second straight Breeders' Cup. Uh, and that would be something, uh, something pretty special for a female to win two straight against the boys in the Breeders' Cup turf. But Tarnawa, make no mistake about her recent form. She is as good as ever, and I like her chances. Domestic spending is an awfully good American to, to give her a go, but uh, I have to go with Tarnawa as well as the horse to be in the Breeders' Cup turf. We've come down to the classic, Matt. This is it, the big one, $6 million. Uh, it, it looks like a good field. There's, I think there's plenty of potential winners. I, I think the favorites are beatable, but if there's a horse to beat, who is it? Yeah, I, I think the top four, uh, certainly in the classic, are, are all worthy contenders and definitely with a shot to win it. But to me, essential quality uh, is the horse to beat. The distance, um, his record this year is just so impressive. Yeah, impressive in that this is a horse that knows how to win. This is a horse that knows how to uh, get himself in the right kind of position, getting a good trip and finding, uh, always finding enough to get up to win by a half length, uh, three quarters of a length or so, not going to win by four or five flashy lengths. Um, I think Brad Cox and essential quality are give him the horse to beat. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. I think Brad Cox has the horse to beat in here, but I'm not going to say it's essential quality, Matt. Um, Central quality has been wonderful. I've, I've liked him all along since he uh, came out as a two-year-old uh, in Kentucky here. Uh, I've liked him all along. And same things I said about Mo Four is, is what you just said about him. He just knows how to get to the water first when he puts himself in position. Really nice horse. But if there's one horse I really fear the most, I'm going to try to beat him. But if there's one horse I really fear the most, it's Nick's go. Nick's go, the older Cox entrance. Um, he's been the most dominant horse in America. I know he hasn't won them all, but when he runs his race, just really tough. Some of those performances he's turned in. I think he's got things against him here at 10 furlongs. The race may be set up better for essential quality. I've seen three-year-olds though from the East Coast who like to come from a little bit off the pace, just not get it done in California in the classic. Uh, I think Nick's go is the one that I'll have to beat the most in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Wow, 14 races, 14 horses to beat. Actually, it was 21 horses to beat because we agreed on seven and we disagreed on seven. Can I get a quick parting shot from you, my friend, Matt Shipman? Absolutely. We will be back twice next week um, with our picks for each of the race. We'll uh, talk about suggested wagers, the, the two big shows, maybe the two biggest shows that you like to get from us during the year. Absolutely. Thanks to our producer, Ben Wilkie. Thanks to all you for watching every week. We sure do appreciate it. And thanks to our sponsor, Derby Wars. We'll be back next week right here on Horse Center.